Good afternoon guys. We apologize again for the technical problem that we have experienced during our Facebook live this morning about our seminar. So we just decided to record everything from the start until the end so that you can take note of the takeaways that you can um, uh, learn from this topic. Okay. So topic that I'm going to discuss would be about key concept for robotics curriculum implementation. Okay? We're going to talk about uh, four subtopics, which is basically uh, what are the myths that students, teachers, and administrators, or the school perhaps, are thinking why they cannot implement robotics in their curriculum. Second is, um, what are the key competencies that this curriculum should develop to our students before we sign into a contract or an agreement for any provider. And then third, uh, I'm going to make a walkthrough on what are the different steps, what are the different requirements for the school to actually implement a robotics program. And then lastly, uh, we will discuss on uh, how many kids per students are do we really need for a good implementation of the program. We will talk about the different uh, the different tasks that will be assigned to the students once we start implementing the robotics program and how are we going to uh, solve problems that might arise upon implementation. Okay? So first is, we're going to identify what are the myths about robotics curriculum implementation. Bakit kaya ayaw ni school or natatakot si school or this makes the school say no to adopt certain programs to be implemented in their curriculum, especially with robotics. Okay? One is robotics curriculum, robotics kit is expensive. Okay? Now, is this a myth or is it a truth? Maybe five or seven or eight years ago, this is very true. No, robotics kits are very expensive. Imagine a kit will cost your school around 50,000 pesos. No? And how many students do you have in a class? You have 40, you have 50. Now imagine how much cost the school needs to invest before they can actually implement a robotics program. Diba? So it's expensive. Eh sir, bakit dati nabalitaan namin na this school is already implementing robotics? Eh mahal pala yung robotics that time. Yes, their school were already implementing robotics beside, uh, uh, even if the, the cost of the kit or the program is very expensive. Pero this is the sad reality. The school will post in, in, in their announcement that they're implementing robotics but they only acquired three kids, or four kids, or five kids. Sabihin na natin na lima. No? If you have five kids and you have 50 students, imagine the number of kids to a student. No? One, stu one, one kid to ten students. What are the implications? Diba? We're going to talk about the details of this later on the, when we talk about robotics kit. No? But I just want you to know that there are schools who are implementing this way, way back. No? But it's not about the implementation, it's about the quality. No? Because again, robotics kit was very expensive that time. Now, with some of the new microcontrollers, some of the new robotics kit being introduced Especially in the educational sector, these are very affordable. Your 60,000 way, way back is only for a kit. Now, it might be, you can spend that for, let's say, four kits or five kits. No? It depends on which company is offering that to you. So, you need to have some time to scout some companies that offers the lowest price. Okay, but then again, if that will be the lowest price, it's not the only key variable that you need to undertake when you are signing a contract about a robotics program. No, but that's one thing that you need to consider, no, the cost of the program. It should not be expensive anymore. Next is, 
Is it a myth or a truth or there is a truth about robotics being more on electronics? Okay? Now, uh, with every seminar that I am conducting, no? Uh, they always tell me, Sir, baka hindi ako masyadong makasunod. Wala akong alam sa electronics. Now, let me tell you. Electronics on robotics is only 20%. 80% in robotics are more on programming. Okay? You just need to have the basic concept in electronics like resistors, capacitors, voltage, Yung pinaka-basic lang about electronics, DC, AC, voltage, yun lang. But it's not everything, robotics is not, is not about electronics at all. Okay? It's more on programming. That's why, if you're going to scrutinize a program for robotics, you need to look at the curriculum and see if the curriculum deals more on the programming rather than the hardware. 80% must be dealt in programming. So, ano bang pagkakaiba ng robotics sa electronics? Para malabo, ano yung 80% mo, ano yung 20% mo? Example, if you switch on the light, it turns on, and you switch it off, and it turns off, that is electronics. But at the end of the day, when you, when you turn on and off the lights, and the system can tell you how many times you turn it on, how many times you turn it off, then that is robotics. One key component of robotics is that it must have an intelligence. Okay? So, robotics, it's, it has electronics on it, but it's more on creating the intelligence on how your robot should behave based on the requirements. Okay? So it's more on programming. Actually, the reason why we decided to... Uh, include robotics in our curriculum because we want to produce graduates that are critical thinkers. We want to produce graduates that are good in programming before we offer programming from first year to fourth year, grade 7 to grade 10. No? And then we realize that robotics are dealing with programming at the same time there is a hardware that makes the subjects more interesting. So it's more on creating the intelligence. It's more on programming. Next is, robotics is too technical. Okay? It's too technical. Uh, there are different subject areas in computer science. You have web development, you have game development, you have programming, you have robotics, you have graphic design. No? All of these subjects under ICT, under computer science, these are technical subjects. No? If you are a subject coordinator, what you are thinking every single start of the year is that where would I assign this subject? Okay? Sino yung mas nakakaintindi na itong subject na to? Why? Because it's technical. Okay? So, robotics is, tech is a technical subject because if there is a certain code that misses a character, if you, if you misspell a word, that's already an error. If your program is already running and then suddenly it stops, it's already an error. These are very technical. Okay? But given the proper training, given an adequate uh, time for training teachers on how to implement robotics, how to train them, train them how to program, then the subject will be not technical at all. In some cases, there are teachers who are already knowledgeable with the subject matter. But yet, when they deliver the lesson, students still see it as a technical subject. I always tell my teachers, you know, when you are assigned a technical subject, it is your sole responsibility as a teacher to think of ways on how you can deliver the lesson on a very non-technical way. So, two things that I wanted to remember when it comes to robotics being technical. It depends on your competencies as teacher. It depends on your communication skill as a teacher as well. Okay? So, maybe robotics is technical, but it depends on your skill as a teacher. Another myth about robotics is that 
it's dangerous. No? Sir, sir, ako, baka pag pinagdikit namin to, sasabog yan. No? Sir, sir, pag ginawa namin to, baka may makuryente kami. In some cases, this might happen. Okay? If you will be dealing with 220 volts, you might have a problem with it. If you misconnect the ground and the 5 volts, your module might get burned. Okay? Pero kung 5 volts lang naman yan at nagkabaliktad yung ground, hindi naman yan sasabog. It will, it will just burn your module. Pero kapag 220 volts, eh yan, medyo ano yan, medyo delikado yan. Maaaring sumabog yan or maaaring makorient yung studyante. So we need to guide them properly on how to use these devices or kits. There are some kits that are safe to use. Hindi mo na kailangan isa-isahin yung connection. There are terminals that would not fit one another kung hindi siya para doon. So it's a safety feature. Second is, if you will be, if you will follow your curriculum, I don't see that there would be any activities that will deal with 220 volts. Okay? But if you are doing prototypes for exhibit, uh, hindi natin may iwasan that we need to control a 220 volts uh, current. Okay? So, what we can do about it is that we need to monitor it on how they do it every single step of the project or prototype. Okay? Lahat naman ang ginagawa ng mga estudyante, if these activities are not attended, it's dangerous. Okay? But we need to give more attention on those topics, on those prototypes that will require high voltage manipulation. Okay? Again, probably, uh, in some cases, it might be dangerous. But if you will follow rigorously the prepared curriculum, I don't remember anybody being electrocuted using... 5 volts or until 12 volts na paggamit ng circuit. Okay? So, it's a misconception. Especially with junior high school and senior high school. Another one is, it's more on the wow, not the why. This is not a myth. No? This is something that has driven me to do my own curriculum in robotics. No? Um, sadly, there are companies, there are providers that will promise you heaven and earth just for you to sign that contract for them for three years, two years, or even a year. No? And what do they offer? They would not discuss right away about the curriculum, but rather, they will basically tell you that when you compete and you win amongst all of our clients, we will send you to an international competition. We'll send you to China, we'll send you to Singapore, we'll send you to the US. Now, some, I'm not saying all, some schools, some teachers, some administrators are more focused on what they can get on the proposal rather than what the student can get out of the program. Minsan makita lang nila na it follows the line the arm gets one object from one point and put it on another point. Wow, okay na yan. Sige na, yan na yung kukunin namin. Unfortunately, you should be given more time to evaluate the curriculum more than the kit. Okay? So it's not more on the wow, it should be more on the why. Later, I'll be discussing uh, about critical thinking that your robotics curriculum must focus more on the why than the what. No. Just one more example, schools are very much into competition. I have nothing against competition. Competition is good. No. But they focus more on competitions, on how a robot can follow a line, on how a robot can push another robot outside of the circle, rather than focusing their attention and resources on students on how to create innovations. Like for example, now that we are experiencing the pandemic, if you're going to look at the news feed, if you're going to look at Facebook pages, makers are making their way to contribute on how uh, robotics specifically can contribute in the solution of the pandemic. 
Now, very few are participating because very few who are already implementing robotics focus their attention on the why and the wow. So, this is a very important aspect that you need to consider when you are implementing a robotics program or if you are thinking of adopting certain proposal. Okay? Next. Since I have already understood or I have already, I, I was enlightened on the term. No? I was already enlightened that these, are, these myths are not true. These myths are true but there are precautions that we can undertake. No? Let's implement robotics now. Hindi pa rin. Okay? You, you, you need to... Oh, the, the most important thing that you need to consider, as I always mention, is the curriculum. What are the future ready skills included in the curriculum that when I implement it, these are the skills year after year, activity after activity, that my students will develop. What I'm going to mention are your checklists. Okay? Just in case na hindi ko na na-review eh, basta sabi na lang, implement na lang namin yung robotics program eh. Wala tayong magagawa, in-implement na eh. Nadya na yan eh. But these are the checklists that you need to do every after activity, every after lecture, every after performance task. Because this checklist that I'm going to mention will define whether you will terminate the contract or would not renew the contract at all. Kasi nga, walang kwenta. Okay? So, your robotics program, your curriculum for robotics, should develop on your students their communication skills. Akala nila, pag may robotics tayo, eh, tahimik na kasi nagpo-program na. Tahimik na kasi nag assemble na. Yes, it's true. You don't want any noise bothering you when you are programming or when you are assembling. No? But there should be something in the activity that would let the student express themselves. No? For example, there is a criteria in your rubrics that would enable them to explain what they did on the project. In that case, they are developing their communication skills on how to speak the language. Now, regardless whether you want to be specific with your rule that only English will be used in explaining the, the, the topic or you allow taglish, you allow bilingual, it's up to you. What important, the, the most important part is you have them to stand up and you have them, you give them time to explain their project. Okay? In that, in, in that particular case, then you are developing skills for them to express themselves, to communicate. No? And then what else? In terms of communication, we want to train them or we want to see as the implementation goes on, we want to see if the curriculum is making our student a uh, sensitized receiver. May ibig sabihin natin ng sensitized receiver. When they work on prototypes or projects or performance tasks, for sure, time is at not their side. No. In any subject naman yan, parating kulang yung oras. But as they realize it, that time is not at their side, they will be more conscious on how to receive the message. How do they understand the message? Yung bang tipong isang sabi mo lang, gets na nila kagad, gawa na kagad. Because they were trained that time is not at their side. Kaya kailangan mag-gets kagad nila. Hindi sila hindi po mga studyante or klase na, okay class, get one-fourth sheet of paper. Sir, one-fourth? Sir, one-half? Hindi, one-fourth. Hindi sila yung mga tipo ng studyante na, write on your papers one to ten. Sir, one to twenty. Sir, one to fifteen. They should get the message right away. They should analyze the instruction and follow it right away. You call it soft skills or wherever skills, these are the skills that your robotics curriculum must possess, must have. Next is 
your robotics program at the end of each activity no or at the end of the curriculum per se it should develop collaboration amongst your students parati naman yan no? most of the subject that that we teach we want them to collaborate okay now collaboration means that they are able to work together they are able to maximize the task being assigned to them they are able to work harmoniously paano yon doon ba sa curriculum sinasabi niya ba how are you going to group them or sabi lang okay group yourselves into three when they group themselves for 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 without explaining their um, responsibilities, it would result to chaos. So basically, your curriculum should have explicitly defined how collaboration uh, can happen inside these activities. Okay? Eh sir, paano yun, no? Uh, ang ratio ng, curic- ng, ng kit namin to student is 1 is to 1. How... This one student collaborate with other students. They are not allowed to ask questions during the activity. Yes, during the activity. But outside the activity, once they go home, I think one thing that they will do is they will research on the internet. They will Google it. And then they will go into a forum. They will read on the forum. If the answer is not there, they will ask questions. Somebody will answer their question. Hindi man sabay silang nag the moment that the question was raised and somebody answered it on the thread, your student is collaborating with somebody else. Again, collaboration. Mahihirapan niya sigurado na gawin niyang mag-isa. But of course, there is some. No? Pero, they would seek help for other people for sure. Okay? Next is, when we talk about collaboration, uh, it, it also needs to develop among our students what we call self-dependent. Sir, paano yun? Uh, kapag one is to one kami, one kit to one robotic kit, ah, dependent yan, siya na mag-isa, sigurado. Check na tayo dyan. Pero, yung work together, na-explain ko na kanina. Pero yung self-dependent, pasok na pasok si one is to one. Paano sir, kapag three students to one kit, Paano magiging self-dependent? Eh, tatlo nga sila. Kailangan nila mag-collaborate. Kailangan nila magtanungan. When we talk about self-dependent, we are referring to the teachers. No? Let us leave them alone. No? Let them do the activities. Don't spoon feed your students. In that case, they will learn how to be self-dependent as a group and self-dependent as an individual. I don't know with your classroom management, but for me, when I do my robotics class, uh, my classroom management is, I'm going to explain uh, all the key concepts about the module, for example. I'm going to explain how they can use this, this module in real life situation. I'm going to explain the schematic diagram. I'm going to explain the circuit diagram. I'm going to discuss with them the codes that is needed on how these uh, modules will run. And then after that, during laboratory, I leave them on their own. One of my rules is that during laboratory, I don't answer questions. I already explained everything. I want it to be self-dependent. Pero syempre, kailangan... Conscious din tayo on how we tell the students that we don't answer question. Hindi pwede na masungi, no? Di ba explain ko namin yan? Ba't pa ako mag-explain yan? Yeah. You, you express to them, you, you, you train them to be self-dependent using kind words. Words that will encourage them to do more, not to do less, or to do nothing at all. Siyempre, pag sinigawan mo yan, mag- parang negative yung dating. Pero, try mo nga na hanapin doon sa lecture natin kanina. Parang nandun yun eh. Parang na-discuss ko yan. Sige, hanapin mo. Or, tignan mo yung circuit mo, no? parang may kulang lang eh. Parang may isa dyan na parang hindi dapat nandun. Tignan mo yung codes mo. Parang may sumobrang characters eh. But you are not pointing on the exact solutions. You are just telling them or guiding them on the right path to come up with the correct solution. 
Because if you tell them the correct solution right away, there is no set gratification that they have solved the problems on their own. Okay, palitan mo yan, pinalitan, sir, tapos na kami, check, tapos na. Walang impact. Pero let them do, guide them on what they need to do to come up with the correct solutions or answer at the end of the day. Nag-gets ko. Sakto. Nagawa ko. Diba? That is what we want to do. We being great teachers are not measured on the number of lectures that we give to our students, but on the actual learning and application of that lecture to their everyday lives. Okay? So let's teach them how to be self-dependent. Next is critical thinking. Okay? This is one of the most important part of the curriculum that we need to search whether it is incorporated in the lectures, activities, performance tasks in the package that you are availing. When you talk about critical thinking, for me, it's synonymously the same as logic, power of reasoning. In programming, it is also equivalent to logic. Programming is logic, power of reasoning. No? It means that every code that I'm going to write, there is a reason behind that. If I use INT, my explanation is that I am preparing a variable that will hold a numerical value that has no decimal point. That's why I use INT for the data type. There's logic. There's critical thinking. Anong sabi ko kanina? Let's give them time to explain. Eto na yun. Diba? You are targeting two birds, uh, two, two, two birds with one stone at the same time. You give them chance to speak develop their communication skill, and as you listen to their reason, you are now measuring if they are critical thinkers. Kapag kinopia lang nila yan, they cannot explain. Kinopia lang nila, copy-paste lang eh. Even the circuit, pwede lang nilang copy and how, they, how the other group connected the modules on their circuit and apply it on their own. Pero, we cannot measure kung naintindihan ba nila o hindi. Unless, otherwise, we ask them questions. We give them time to express themselves. We give them time to reason out, explain the logic on why. Kaya nga sabi ko kanina, your robotics program should deal with the why rather than the wow. Okay? Critical thinkers. Your students should learn how to ask questions. Now, don't be bothered with it. Paano sa kunyari, walang nagtanong ng question. Ang ugali pa naman natin mga teachers, after the discussion, just for us to wash our hands, na nagtanong tayo, okay class, is there any questions? Wala. Is there any questions? Wala pa rin. Going once? Going twice? Class dismiss. Now, don't be bothered when nobody asks questions during that time. But when you are discussing, makikita mo naman sa expression ng mukha. If they are, para, paano nga ba ito? No? Paano nga ba nangyayari ito? Some does not have that skill yet, yet, to express themselves. Okay? Kaya nahihiya sila. Pero as you go around, while they are doing their project, you will see on their facial recognition on how they are reacting to the problem. Ano nga ba ito? Ano yung ba ito? Diba? Alam mo eh. So, if implementing the program and you are seeing these indicators, it means it's a big check. Diba? Okay, itong mga activities ah. It makes our students ask questions. Okay? What else? There are critical thinkers if you teach them if at the end of the lesson, you develop the ability of your students to think out of the box. When you do your lecture, one plus one. When you do your formative activity, one plus one plus one. 
When you do your summative activity, 1 plus 1 multiplied by 3 is equals to, at first, you give them what they can use inside the box. After that, let them do activities that will basically let them think out of the box. Hindi niya naman ni lecture ko ah. Bakit sinasabi niya rito sa activity na to? They are already thinking. Diba? Pero, if the activities being prepared by your program was finished, no? In a very short period of time, ang bilis na tapos, eh, probably your students are good. No? Pero kung lahat ng sudyante ganoon ang nagiging sequence, ganoon ang nagiging pattern, tapos kagad, you might need to rethink. You might need to evaluate again your curriculum. You might need to evaluate again your program. Is the program developing our students their ability to think out of the box? And then, critical thinkers knows how to evaluate data. One mistake that we do as teachers when we teach programming is that we allow our students to finish a problem from the start until the end right away. Now, if there are errors that happens along the way, students will just experience frustration. Ano ba yan? Bakit mali yung output? Ano ba yan? Bakit yung syntax ko mali? No? They should learn how to evaluate data, especially in computer, we always deal with input, process, and output. Basic concept in computer, GIGO, garbage in, garbage out. If your input is correct, regardless of your process, for sure your output will be incorrect. So why not train your students to focus first if you are getting the right input if you're getting the right input, the next step is to identify the process. The third step is to test the process whether it will come up with the expected output. Module by module. Let them evaluate first what are the different variables that we have before we create the process. What are the different variables that we have before we create the solution? Dati nga nung time namin, pag mag-solve ka ng math problems, no? what is the problem, what is given, what is the process, and then solution. No? Sa sobrang instant ng mga bagay ngayon, instant noodles, no? Insta, instant money, pati solution sa mga ito, instant na rin. No? How I wish that this is how we're going to do programming or robotics or any problem for that matter for us to develop critical thinkers amongst our students. Okay, next one is creativity. Okay? Creativity means that the program that you are using, the program that you are evaluating are more lenient of Developing, um, developing prototypes, developing activities, developing exercises, coming up with something new out of nothing. That's creativity. No. Sometimes, what we do is we just copy, 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 and copy. It's not creativity. We should learn how to create new inventions. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm not a fan of copying. Okay lang sa akin na kumopya. Okay lang sa akin na gayahin. Okay? Ako nga, I would encourage you to, to create activities or additional activities where they will follow instructables. They will follow YouTube uh, instructions. They will follow written examples. And then out of there, they need to create something new. You need to immerse themselves on these technologies before you expect them to do something new. Hindi yan yung, okay, ito yung lesson natin, do something new. No, you need to immerse your students with the different 
uses of this technology before you can actually create something new. Ang punto ko lang is that before that you don't satisfy, you don't be satisfied with the output that you already know has been copied from another project. There should be some improvements. Katulad ng operating system natin, Windows, it started with Windows 3.0. And then it's too slow. The graphic is not good. They created Windows 95. But it consumes a lot of memory. They created Windows 98. It's the same technology. But every time that they do another one, there is a new invention. There is a new concept. There is a new technology embedded onto it. Okay? Being creative means you are a flexible thinker. What do I mean? Ah, bago to. Ako pa lang nakakaisip nito, no? Pero along the process, along the process, biglang meron kailangang baguhin. Yung iba stubborn. No, I'm going to stick with my plan. Even though, at the middle of it, you already found out that at the end, you're going to fail. It's not being creative. You should be able to learn. You should be able to see your student while they are doing this and you suggested something that will make it better, they would accept it right away. Or at least they would consider. Diba? So being creative means you are a flexible thinker. Next is they are able to adapt to changes. Okay? Like for example, your students are... Focus right now with IoT projects. No? That's the latest. No? IoT, IoT, IoT. Then, the pandemic came in. No? There are projects that you can do without IoT. Hindi IoT ako eh. IoT ako. Ito yung gusto kong gawin ngayon eh. But the, but the requirement, the need right now is about projects that will solve the pandemic. If you want to be creative, you should be an open-minded person. Diba? Nagbago eh. Ibahin muna natin yung linya natin. Diba? Suddenly, when you are preparing your curriculum, the internet is not working. How are you going to adapt to these changes? You need to be creative as a teacher. Ano yung pwede kong ipalit dito sa activity na to? Diba? Your curriculum, your program, should give you some sort of plan B or plan C if this thing happens. Or you are already prepared by your provider that if this thing happens, these are your alternatives. Okay? Again, this is another key element that you need to check if you are implementing it. This is another element that you can X out or check out also during the implementation. Okay? So, it's about how are we going to evaluate a program that will be implemented? It's how are we going to take notes of the experiences that we encountered on the process of the implementation? Because these are the key elements that will help us decide to continue with the program, end with the program, or look for another program. And the key elements or key indicator for this are Does your program develop the communication skills of your students? Does your curriculum provide enough activity for them to think critically? Is there enough activities? Is there enough space within the program that lets them do something new? Create something new? Become creative for that matter? No? Is there any part of the program that would enable your student to collaborate with their classmates, with the internet, with a group chat perhaps? No? These are the key elements or concepts that you need to consider during implementation, before implementation, and after implementation. And another thing, as I have mentioned, Seldom that you heard from the start until now that I talk about the kid. It is not about the kid. It's about the program. Okay? 
Next, let us now discuss. Okay, sir. Na naintindihan na namin, no? That these are only myths. We are already enlightened na eto lang naman yan. Now, we found a partner, we found a provider, we found a program that answers or develop these key competencies among our students. We are now ready to implement it. How are we going to implement now the robotics program? You are fortunate if until at this point, your provider will still give you the guidance. Okay, but if not, these are the key concepts, these are the elements, these are the things that you need to consider as a school during or before the implementation of your robotics program. Number one is you need to consider your time. Okay? For public school, for example, most of them doesn't have a separate time for computer. So if you will replace their computer subject with robotics, it should be integrated with other subjects. Okay? So, problema ng ibang public school, how can we introduce another subject? Eh, yung dating ang web development, Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, etc. We find it difficult to integrate it with other subject matter. And with some of the programs that I see right now, medyo malaking problema yung subject integration. There are few programs that explicitly define on where or on what particular subject this topic can be integrated. No? For sure, this program has, uh, this uh, curriculum developer already considered the vertical articulation of the program. It means that they already identify all the power competencies from grade 7 to grade 10. They have already distributed it, there is no redundancy, it's already created a spiral, etc., etc. But the problem right now that we have is how are we going to do the horizontal articulation of the curriculum? It means that how are we going to spread out, how are we going to identify the connection of our topics to science, math, English, social, etc. Okay? Yung time. Problema natin. Sir, we're not a public school. A private school kami. We meet once a week. That's good. Ano problema natin sa time? Your current computer subject, will it be replaced by robotics? Or, will robotics just be integrated within your computer subject? Diba? So, time na naman ang problema natin. Yung ibang school naman, they have three times a week to meet. Okay? Paano naging problema yung time? Three times a week nga sila nag-meet. On that three times a week that you are meeting them, no, how many how many hours are you going to allot for the hands-on? How many hours are you going to allot for the lecture? Or how many hours will I allow for robotics? How many quarters will I allow for robotics? How many semester will I allow for robotics? And how many hours, how many semester or quarter will I assign other subject matter, other computer subject? Okay? So, you need to consider the time that you have. Yung iba naman ang ginagawa nila, this would only be for special class. Pwede rin naman yun, no? This would meet once a week and everything that they will discuss is only about robotics. Nothing more, nothing less. Okay? Except it will, it will be a separate subject. Okay? So again, time means will it be a separate subject or will it be integrated with other subject? Another thing to consider on your implementation is your robotic skill. Ito na tayo sa robotic skill. No? I have a robotic skill that costs 50,000. I have a robotic kit that costs 70,000. I have a robotic skill that costs 20,000. Which one would I buy? It's not about the robotic skill. It's about the competencies. I can use a robotic kit that costs around 10,000 pesos and develop the same competencies that a 50,000 pesos robotic kit has. That is because your robotic kit is only a tool. It's only a tool. Yung 50,000 robotic kit, an LED will teach you an if-else conditional statement. That's the competencies. 
it will teach you the looping statement. I can do that with the same robotic kit that was only 5 pesos per egg. So it's not about the kit. So those who are asking, sir, what is the best robotic kit outside the market? No? All robotic kits are the best. It depends on what competencies do you want to, to, to develop. Parang dati, ang tinitignan natin parate when we teach are the subject, ma the, the topics. No? Ano yung mga topics na i-discuss ko for this year? Hindi. Ano yung competencies, competencies that you want to develop throughout the year? And then from your competencies, from your competencies, you now develop or you now get the proper tool in doing so. You get the topics. That's the role of your robotics kit. Okay? Second, what is the ratio of a kit to a student? Of course, the idea is one is to one. Okay? Especially now that we encountered the problem about the pandemic. Imagine, if the kit is owned by the school and then suddenly the school year stops, but you still need to give them assignment to complete the requirement, how can they do that? If they don't have a robotic kit at their home. Sir, meron naman simulators eh. We have Tinkercad, we have this and that. Pwede naman. Okay? But nothing replace experience. Experience that you assemble it, experience that you finish it, the experience that you burn it. Diba? So, one thing that you need to think of about robotics kit, when the school purchase the robotics kit, and then we will just have the student use it inside the school, or since the kit is very much affordable right now, we can already ask the students to buy their own kit. So, one is to one is the ideal. Kung talagang wala pang budget si school, we can opt to 2 is to 1. Kung walang wala talaga, sige 3 is to 1. Mamaya in mention po, what will be the role of these uh, members inside this group if that is 3 is to 1? Sir, wala talaga eh. Wala talaga. But we're willing to ano, 4 is to 1, sir. Para sa akin, 4 is to 1 will be the maximum. As in the maximum. Okay? Because remember, no matter how good your program is, no matter how good your teacher implementing the program is, if the number of students to a kit would not be enough, would be more than four, your computer program will definitely fail. It will fail. So consider about buying enough robotics kit in your class. Meet na lang yung expensive niya. Next, technological infrastructure. Okay, sir, we have the time. You already have the kits, 3 is to 1, as you mentioned. What else? Technological infrastructure. Do you have enough laboratory rooms to uh, accommodate your robotics classes? Inside your room, do you have computers? What is the speed of your computer? May ibang mga robotics material or course uh, program na medyo mataas yung specs na kailangan nila. Meron din naman mababa. Now, the, uh, the arrangement of your seats. Siyempre, 1 is to 1 tayo sa computer before. And nag 3 is to 1 ka. They should have enough space for them to work on with their hardware. Ako, ginawa ko, uh, 3 is to 1, yung dalawang computer pinatanggal ko. So, isang computer lang naman ang gagamitin. Tapos, etong part na to, yung empty space na nagawa natin, to na sila mag-a-assemble ng prototype. Do you have internet connection? We want to we want to avail our of your IoT program. Internet of things. So, basically, you need internet connection. Kung mabagal yung internet, kung wala kayong internet at all, then how are you going to implement the program? You need to consider your technological infrastructure. Next, staff training. Okay? These are the common hindrances why school doesn't want robotics to be incorporated in their curriculum. The price, the time, and the competencies of the teachers. 
Sinabi ko pa lang, uy, magro-robotics tayo ngayon. Ako, wala akong alam dyan. Matanda na ako para dyan. Bigay mo na lang doon sa teacher na mas bata sa akin. The reason why we are afraid as human beings, we are afraid of what we don't know. Hindi natin alam eh. Kaya ako, if I would convince a school to adopt a robotics program that I have created, I don't want a presentation like this. I would opt to demonstrate to them to ask their teachers to undergo my training. In that case, they will experience how easy it is to implement the actual program. Train your staff. Equip them. Equip your teachers with the key competencies on how they will implement your robotics program smoothly. Not only that, the competencies of your teachers are not only dependent on them, sometimes they are dependent as well with your provider. How many times did your provider visit your school to ask your teachers, how's the implementation? Are there any problems that you are encountering? How could we help? For me, at least, they should visit you once a month. Physical visit. The communication through FB, Messenger, and text that should happen regularly, but at least once a month. There, will be, there, there should be someone going to your school and, and asking you about problems encountered during the implementation and give some alternatives or solution on the way. Diba? So train your staff and make sure that the support coming from your provider will always be there. Stop training. Just some few more slides. Another one is management of your resources. What do we mean by management of your resources? Okay. You acquired 50, ano uh, not 50. You acquired, let's say, 25 robotics kit. No, you have 2 is to 1 ratio. How are you going to store them? Okay. Are you going to store your robotics kit on, let's say, a box to give it to them, they do the activity, they return it to you. Okay? Or, are you going to store your robotics kit within containers where you just put out those materials or devices that your student needs when they will do the activities? Or, you only have, you have two laboratories, but you only have one robotic kit, or one set of robotic kits. You need to transfer it from one room to another. How are you going to manage your resources? When are you going to evaluate, when are you going to make your inventories? Will it be daily? Will it be monthly? Will it be a section after section? Now, my suggestion is this. If this is a shared kit, it means the kit belongs to the school. A section will be using the kit for now, and another section will be using it after. I would suggest that you have some sort of containers, no? rather than giving them individual kits inside the box. Especially if what you have inside the box uh, are devices that will not be used in the activity. They will just get curious. Baka masira pa. Hindi ka tulad ng naka-container, naka you just bring out what is needed for the activity. That will make your life easy and inventory of your kits easier. Kasi kapag naka-box, syempre kahit yung hindi ginamit, i-account mo yan. Bibilangin mo yan. And then kapag naka-ganito naman, naka-drawer siya, kung lang yung nilabas mo, yun lang yung bilangin mo. And assign someone to do that. If not, I would suggest that you have a robotics technician always stand by during your period. Ang ginagawa ni, ni robotics technician parang si science laboratory technician. Siya yung nagbibigay ng mga, uh, mga kailangan ni, ng, ng sudyante. Siya rin yung gumagawa ng inventory. Siya yung nangangalaga. Siya yung nag -aayos. Somebody who knows how to solve them. Somebody who knows robotics as well. 
so that you as a teacher you you focus your attention on delivering the delivering the lesson smoothly you don't concern about the kids anymore it's not your concern anymore so you need to manage your resources okay you should know where to place it next is try to join online community okay on these different online communities over facebook over over trends over web pages websites that you can join this will enrich your knowledge uh, with robotics no, not only as teachers pati yung mga sudyante no, doon sa mga group na to maraming mga questions maraming mga problems na nagtatanong okay? and then somebody would answer it and then it will reply okay nasubukan ko yan gumana it's something that you gain no, outside of your curriculum online community is very uh, important or helpful when you are implementing the program. You as a teacher, when you join online community, this is where you will get some ideas no? that you can use, some prototypes that you can ask your students to do. So join online communities. Last one under implementation is that you try to go beyond the curriculum. What do I mean by you go beyond? The curriculum. It means that if the curriculum shows you or teaches you A to B, try to learn the other letters of the alphabet. Okay? For example, you already have your regular classes for robotics. Assemble a robotics team. Ano yung ginagawa ng robotics team? They are not only focused on they are not only focused on competitions, but you will uh, you will teach them something that we don't teach in the curriculum so that at the end of the school year they would come up with prototypes that are outside of the curriculum additional prototypes additional project that you can use on your exhibit okay you go beyond the curriculum tayo mga teachers sadly sometimes hindi ko naman nilalahat we are too dependent with the book Lahat gusto natin sundin kung ano yung nakalagay sa book. Kung ano yung explanation sa book, yun na yun, no We copy and paste it on the PowerPoint. No? We need to try to explore. We need to try to go beyond the curriculum. It's a responsibility that you will be burdened of if your heart is really in the field of teaching. Whether it is on ICT, whether that is on robotics, whether that is on English. It will be a burden unto your heart to go beyond the curriculum no, if you are really into teaching. Okay? Now, we already busted and proved some of the myths about robotics. We already identified that these are the different skills and competencies that we want our graduates to have. We have already list out the different steps, the different aspects of the implementation of the robotics program inside our school. The next thing that we need to remember is, eto na, you are already inside your classroom. How are you going to group them? So let me, let me just discuss how you will go through with your robotics task assignment. Again, the idea is one kit to one student. At most, you have one kit to four students. But if you have at, least, uh, at most one kit to three students, this is how you will be dividing the key assignment to them. Okay, member number one will be the programmer. The main, part, the main responsibility of the programmer is to type the codes, to give instructions to the robot. He is the one responsible in making the robot to act intelligently. Okay? Si programmer ang gagawa nun. Second member of the group would be the assembler. The main responsibility of this guy is to get what is needed on the robotics kit and bring it to the group. At the same time, assemble it. Make sure that all connections 
are on the right places. Si ascender yan. And then, the last member of the group, the third member of the group, is the checker. While the program, ito yung supervisor, while the programmer is typing the codes, he is already scouting the syntax error. While the program is running, he is also looking into the logical errors. While the program is running, they are already looking into the runtime error. Dalawa na sila. But just in case that the program runs smoothly, another concern of the assembler is to double check also the work of the assembler if everything are connected properly. Yun yung trabaho ni assembler. Okay? Now, at most, kung four members per group, the main problem is anong gagawin niya? No, siguro ito yung taga-masahe, taga-bili ng, ng pagkain, taga-bayad ng bills. No, kidding aside, he can be in charge of the documentation. No, but this will be an additional burden to the teacher. You need to modify now your rubrics in such a way that there are documents that they need to pass and for you to check. Okay, that's the most number of students that I can think of on a robotic uh, groupings, if not one is to one. If you're going to exceed that number, there's uh, a big probability that your program will fail. Okay? Now, let's not stop with these responsibilities. After the project, after the activity is done, it is now the responsibility of each people in this group to explain what they did. Hindi yan yung, tapos na yung program, gumana na, sir, pakicheck, okay, 100 yan, tapos na. There should be a time allotment on where each individual in the group will explain what they did so that the assembler will learn the program and the programmer will learn how to assemble. If you're going to do this inside your, your robotics class, namimit natin yung isa sa mga future ready skill na minention ko kanina. Communication. Okay? They should communicate to one another. And then lastly, after the activity, and you will be doing another activity, this responsibility should change or should be rotated. Kung programmer ako ngayon, sa susunod ako naman yung checker. Kung checker ako ngayon, sa susunod ako naman yung assembler. Kung assembler ako ngayon, sa susunod ako naman yung programmer. So, there should be something on the, let's say, grading sheet that you are collecting from them that you can find out, you can make sure that the responsibility of these people are being rotated. Okay? Yan yung mga importante na kailangan natin uh, isa alam-alam sa groupings natin sa robotics class. Should be the question and answer. No? But again, we don't have the, the time kanina to do this. No? Again, uh, I'm going to post some information about me later. No? If you have some questions about implementation, no? something that I did not answer from this seminar, you can PM me and I would uh, be happy to answer it as soon as possible. Okay? So, before I end, I would just like to uh, give you this quote. The only way to basically change our educational processes, the only way for us to make that leap of faith is to basically change the beliefs, the character, change the perception, change the values of the major stakeholders inside the school. If you, if you want to debunk the myths about robotics, if we want to implement robotics, if we want to uh, nurture the competencies that is needed for robotics, we need to change the beliefs, the values, the character of the teachers, of the students, of the parents, of the administrators, all major key holders. And when we talk about attitude, behavior, we are talking about cultural issues. It's not a technological one. 
it's not about the technicalities anymore. It's about our perception about education. It's about our perception about development. It's not the bits and the bytes. With that, again, thank you so much for those who listen, watch, and bear with me with the problem that we have encountered this morning. Thank you so much. If you have uh, questions, you can contact me on 0908-860-6795. This is my Facebook account, Arvin Buendia. Uh, you can email me at arvinbuendia at gmail.com. Okay? Uh, if you have if you have any questions or if you want us to do and do trainings with your teachers so you can reach me through these numbers and these pages so with that again thank you so much and god bless let us we together we we learn together as one thank you so much